This is Movie Town. Leslie Mitchell reporting. Three weeks after the Allies had landed in France, their combined skill and valour had secured not only a bridgehead, but also a great harbour. While the Second Army was at close grips with Rommel's main force near Caen, the Americans were winning a great victory in the Cherbourg Peninsula. Mopping up continued, of course, long after the fall of the city. over of the city to the French was indeed a historic moment. If the ceremony was brief, the rejoicing at any rate was not. Cherbourg was the first big city in France to be liberated, a great beginning to the freeing of all France. Even after the Hannah, there was a great deal of work to be done in and around Cherbourg. There were prisoners to be rounded up, for one thing. They were the remnants of four divisions, and every day the count increased by thousands. Already there were tens of thousands behind the wire or safely shipped across the channel, and still more kept coming in. Whatever they may have been told by Nazi propaganda, they naturally received absolutely correct prisoner of war treatment, and it looks as though they weren't exactly slow to take advantage of the fact. And so, through the streets of the city they once believed they could hold indefinitely, they were led away into captivity. What a glad sight for the French this must have been. After over four years, the Bosch was on his way out. The sight that met the prisoners' gaze on the beaches apparently amazed many of them. As they were marched on board the landing craft for their cross-channel trip, they caught just a glimpse of the power of the Allied invasion. Obviously, the fall of Cherbourg didn't immediately free that port for the landing of supplies. Meanwhile, however, landings on the beaches had been going forward unceasingly. Although we were far from helped by the weather, our build-up had been magnificent. And here, by the way, is the first film to be released showing one of the invasion force's new weapons, the Scorpion tank. Invented by a South African, it's a land minesweeper, a tank with an absolute flail of chains revolving at high speed, which lashed the ground ahead, exploding mines and clearing a lane of safety. channel having been swept clear, it's charted with white tape. Even before the end of mopping up in Cherbourg, the Second Army under Lieutenant General Sir Miles Dempsey had moved into new positions for its advance in the Carl sector. This picture of the General, taken earlier, has now been released. General Dempsey commands an army of United Kingdom and Canadian troops. Some of them veterans with great battle experience, others now in action for the first time. But all were veterans in the sense that they had years of service behind them, all were superbly trained and equipped. Beyond T, into open country in the direction of Eversy, outflanking Caen to the southwest, these men of the Second Army advanced. General Dempsey is reported to have said that this was as good a place in which to kill Germans as anywhere else. That, in fact, is exactly what they have been doing. Infantry and armor drove a deep wedge into Rommel's position, drawing more of the enemy's reserves against them, beating off counterattacks, retaining the initiative.
battle burned its way through village after village, and everywhere in this Norman countryside was evidence that the Hun was once again being outfought. German tanks, the famous Tigers and Panthers, littered the lanes. There were battles between infantry and tanks, and there were tank v tank duels. Here, a Sherman and a Tiger block the road. Here, a Tiger, captured intact, is driven off in triumph by our own men. Now, action had developed into a battle among the small country lanes, the hedges and fields and farms. For our veterans of the desert campaign, a totally new kind of battle. For our veterans who'd been working and training for four years in Britain, it was their battle training turned into reality. For all of them, it has been and still is grim and tough. That goes without saying. Here in Britain, we all know how magnificently the Second Army is fighting. Subjected as some of us are to the harassing fire of flying bombs, we can still only faintly visualize the conditions of the great battle now proceeding in France. These pictures are a sketch of incidents in that battle. They tell a story of war in the villages and the woods, of war against ambush, infiltration, and sniping. The huge Russian breakthrough in the east, the defeat of Kessel Ring in the south, the success and the valor of the Allied forces in the west, these together spelled total defeat for Germany. <laughs> 